to you about the word faith. And I want to talk to you about faith in your own life. And I don't mean religious faith. When you say faith, a lot of people think uh, religion. And religion is not God, and God is not religion, and God is not uh, necessarily faith. So we're not going to talk about religion. Whenever you hear me talk about God, understand that I have no uh, dog in that show. I absolutely, unity, which is the or, uh, faith that I am ordained in, is a non-proselytizing religion. In other words, it truly believes that you should never go out and tell people about your religion and trying to convert them, that your life should be exactly what it is you want to project out into the world and that that example, as Benjamin Franklin said, the best sermon is a good example, tends to uh, bring people in and attract them. But I want to talk to you about your faith because I want to talk about the concept of faith. Edwin Gaines, who wrote the book, The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity, and if you haven't read that book yet, get it now, read it now. And if you really want some enjoyment, download the Audible. So you can listen to Ed Wayne and you can hear her voice, honey. She just has the most wonderful voice. Anyway, I was at a, a conference that Ed Wayne was doing one time and I overheard somebody. This happens a lot. You know, when somebody is speaking or teaching, other people during the break will gather around to ask questions and tell particular things about themselves. So this one woman was sharing about something that was coming up that she was afraid was not going to work out. And Edwin, she kept saying, I'm afraid. And Edwin kept saying, why are you putting faith in what you don't want? Let me say that again. She was afraid of what might happen and constantly running that through her head. Now, why do we do that? We've talked about that before on previous jump starts. Our minds are literally designed to worry to prepare us for the negative things that could potentially happen. The challenge is, rather than worrying, preparing, and forgetting about it, we tend to ruminate on it. We tend to bring it up over and over and over and over again in our minds. So Edwin said to this woman, why are you having faith in what you don't want? And then the woman, and then Edwin said something very powerful and affirmative to the woman, I see this working out. Great for you, I see this working out, blah, 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 blah. And the woman said, and this is the key, oh, I wish I had your faith. To which Edwin responded, well, darling, have it. Just, here's my faith, just have it. And I love the fact that Edwin does that. She's done it with me before. I, I've been talking to her about things on the phone. And I'm like, well, I'm not sure about this. I was like, I remember what you say. Have your faith because you, she has more faith than anyone I have ever met. But she will tell you that it is a cultivated muscle. Faith is a cultivated muscle muscle. It is not what we are born with. It is something that we actively have to pursue and to do. And faith has to do simply with what you believe. Now, once again, the etymologist in me, Daniel Byrne knows this, that when I looked up that I, I heard the word belief, I thought about it, I looked up the word faith, <laughs> I looked up belief, Belief, take this in for a second. This is extremely important, okay? this If you can get this at a deep level, this will change your life, all right? The word belief simply means that which you have decided is true. Let me say that again. The word belief is that which you have decided is true. It is something you decide. I believe in this, you know? It is something I have decided to, to be true. I, I believe that for myself, eating a plant-based diet is the way to go, right? Well, I have decided that is true. All belief is a decision. Even Christian, spiritual, Hindu, Japanese, not Japanese, but Buddhist, all faith, all belief is something you have simply decided is true. So take that in for a second and realize what an enormous gatekeeper you are in your life simply by having the faith, as Edwin says, and deciding something's true. Edwin decides it's true and then she holds that thought over and over and over and over and over in her head until it becomes true. We live in a made-to-order universe, friends. I want to tell you a story. This is a true story. Everything I'm going to tell you is true. It will blow your mind. Back when I was... 28, 
I was living in Seattle. That was what, 32 years ago? I was living in Seattle and uh, one of my hobbies still is juggling. I like to juggle. Sometimes I'll go out on the beach and juggle. And I was, uh, I had a juggling bag on my shoulder and I also had a parrot. My parrot's name was Juggles. <laughs> she was a blue front Amazon. And uh, uh, so I had her on my shoulder. Now I had not trimmed her flight feathers in a while. So when I leaned down to put down my juggling bag, a gust of wind hit her and blew her off my shoulder. And she started flapping her wings and she had enough resistance to get up into one of the trees. So in that moment, now let me tell you something else. When I was 16, I had another parrot named Boris. Boris flew away in almost exactly the same circumstances. What happens is if you've got a parrot who does not fly, who you have tri uh, trimmed their flight feathers so they can't fly, that when they ever do grow out and they get an opportunity to fly, their number one fear is hitting the ground, okay? They're afraid of hitting the ground. So what a parrot will do is fly higher and higher and higher. And that's what Boris did. Boris had flown up into a tree and then another wind gust hit him and he flew into another tree, etc. Now, as I'm sitting there in this park in Seattle, Washington, above the uh, fish ladder, and I see my parrot juggles get blown up into a tree. I had, I knew in that moment, I knew in that moment I had a choice. This is when I was really starting to get into personal development, spirituality and everything. And inside my heart went sunk. My heart went, oh my God, this is happening to me again. 12 years later, I'm having a beloved parrot fly away. It's my fault. I didn't keep her wings trimmed well, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in that moment, when that happened, and I began to have that sinking feeling, something inside of me went, no. It was like this rage of, no, we are not going down that path. If you believe that we live in a made-to-order universe, if you believe that faith manipulates matter, let me say that again. If you believe that faith manipulates matter, and I do, then now is an opportunity for you to try your faith. This was the first time that I can remember really making a big like test of something like this. So I literally sat there in the park. I was working selling radio advertising back then. And I called them and I was due some vacation time. So I said, I'm taking vacation right now. When are you coming back? I have no idea. Don't know when I'm coming back. But I'm not coming back until, and I, this is in my mind, until Juggles is at home safe with me. So as I'm sitting there in the park, she is up in a tree, wind blows, she blows her to a higher tree, just like I had seen before. But inside, I kept visualizing and having faith and feeling her little uh, talons on my finger and feeling her crawl up my neck as she liked to do and pull up my ear. So I just sat there and continued to visualize that. Now inside, my ego was going stupid, idiot, you're going to be wrong. That is the ego's biggest fear. The ego would rather be right than you get what you want. And that's what was going on. Now, the ego's there to protect me. It doesn't want me to feel stupid for sitting there visualizing this all the time. But you're always going to have to fight that ego part of you who goes, there's no hope. There's no reason. There's no having faith. Are you crazy? Look, just settle in and know this is not going to work out. Okay? And it's in that moment that you need to scream no, and you need to have faith, and you need to have the courage to visualize what it is you want and to know it's going to happen. So what happened? Not much. I sat there in the park. Young man came and sat down next to me, <laughs> and we ended up talking. I guess he was probably 20. I was about 28. And we sat there, and he actually sat there for hours with me. And that night, when I went back, I printed out a picture of Juggles that I had, and I said that there was a reward, and anyone who could help me find her, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that she's in the tree, in the park. And I posted these sticks, uh, stuck these sticks in the ground and put the little posters that I had made on my computer all around the park. Now, the one person I did not call in that time was my mother. <laughs> I did not call my mother for the first few days, okay? Juggles was still in the tree, and I was literally there from sunrise until sunset 
talking to her, encouraging her to come down, knowing she couldn't really, because one thing she didn't know how to do was land. You know, when I was taking uh, flying lessons as a, fly, a pilot, student pilot, they always used to say, the second hardest thing I ever learned to do was fly a plane. The hardest thing I ever did was learn to land a plane. It is extremely difficult. Now, imagine it's difficult even if you're just a little parrot trying to fly down into a park. But I just held this vision. And finally, on the third day, I called my mother. And I said to her, because my mom is like, Oh, darling, ain't it awful? My mother always had this little quaver of sadness in her voice. And I knew that that was her way of trying to tell me she cared. But what it fired off inside of me was fear. Hey, this isn't going to work out. Why be so sad? And I finally said, Mom, I'm only going to talk to you if you talk about how Juggles is going to come back, how this is going to work out, how everything's going to be OK. So this went on for four days. On the fourth day, all right, fourth day, which would have been a Thursday. It happened on a Sunday. So the fourth full day, I'm out there. Juggles is up in the tree. I'm sitting there. This is before cell phones, right? So I have nothing to do but visualize. Well, sure enough, a strong breeze comes along and blows Juggles out of the tree. She flies around a little bit, and I actually see, get to see her fly above me, and then she flies off, and I mean off, gone, absolutely gone. And inside I went, no, I'm not giving up. I don't care. I absolutely am going to see this work out, period. She's coming back, period, exclamation point. So that night, as I was lying in bed, I was married to my wife, Lisa, at the time. As I was lying in bed with Lisa, I had a dream. And in my dream, I was lying on my back in the park. And as I was lying in my back in the park, asleep, you know how dreams are, juggles flew right over my head, slow motion, just flew over my head. And in my dream, I reached out, grabbed her, and held her to me. And that was my dream. All right. So the next morning, I get a phone call because I had posted my phone number on the little signs I put in the park. And it's the young man who had been sitting with me. And we had been talking that day. All right. Now, so here's what happened. That night when I had that dream where Juggles came back to me, that young man had been on the phone with a friend. Okay, now this is the young man I had met in the park, talked for hours about looking for a, for my parrot. He was on the telephone that night with a good friend of his. Again, I am not making a bit of this up. The friend says, you're never going to believe this. A parrot has just landed on my fence in my backyard. And the guy said, you've got to be kidding me. Well, I've been sitting with a guy who has been trying to recapture this parrot that got away in the park and everything. And he said, well, a parrot has just landed on my fence. And the guy said, I don't know how to, to catch it. I don't know how to attract it. And the young man's friend, the one who's had the parrot land on the fence, said, well, you're not going to believe this. That, that's the way faith stories always go, OK? Because belief tells you not to believe in outlandish, crazy things. But the young man says, his friend says, well, I was just watching a National Geographic special on parrots, and it said they like sunflower seeds, and I bought a bag of sunflower seeds. True story. So he goes out, and he lays the sunflower seeds across the top of the fence with a box at the end. Juggles goes down the fence, eats the sunflower seeds, goes into the box, the guy covers it up, and two days later, I don't want to tell you the entire story, it's even more outlandish than this, but we're reunited because he turned her in to the animal control, and uh, I went in and got her two days later. Now, since that time, I've talked to a number of people who had parrots who have gone through this exact same experience. Do you know how many of them ever got their parrots back? Zero, not one, except me. And do you realize what had to have happened? Juggles had to have flown. And by the way, where she landed 
was like five miles from the park. So she not only flew five miles, she landed on the fence that was owned by the friend of the young man I had been talking to. And my question to you is, how does that work? And my answer to you is, I couldn't care less. The point I'm trying to make is, it does work. It does work. People who have tried to have absolute faith in their lives have had absolute faith experiences. People who have not, don't. And as a result, their ego and their mind gets to tell them, see, told you, told you things weren't going to work out. Oh, something bad, not going to work out, told you. And they get to be right all the while not realizing how powerful they are and how they can apply the power of their faith, which is nothing more than belief. And belief is simply what you have decided to be true. Sarah Wright says, good morning. Uh, Greg says, hi, Will, from Big D, little A, double, <laughs> okay, I get it, from Dallas, hello, Greg. Bonnie is here, Mark is here, Tammy Boatwright, my friend from high school is here. Tammy sent me uh, what I wrote in her, uh, annual in high school the other day. I was like, wow, okay, interesting. Uh, about myself and what I had written. Cynthia says, shared, enjoyed the message today. Great. Lori Ann Carson says, I wonder if certain personality traits are linked stronger to a sense of faith. Good question. We should explore that. Share the joy, says Patty Gay. Mark Gleason says, my daughter Katie had the exact same situation. Her parrot Elvis did the same thing as Juggles. We got her back, exact same story. Love this Juggle story, says Latrice. Well, listen, if you love this story, be sure and share. Share, 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 share. Invite your friends and family. And more importantly, I want to tie this together before I leave you. Be sure and share today. Be sure and say that you shared. This is how I know. And introduce me to your friends and family. Say, hey, this is a great message of faith. I enjoyed it. I thought it, it would appeal to you. And be sure and share. Let's continue to build our online community. All you got to do is share before noon today. And if you do, you could very well win a Will Bowen Tumblr. Where's my name on there? There it is. My little logo that my buddy Mirzloff worked on. So, and I know Mirzloff is watching this morning, my producer. So, you have always given great advice. Thank you, Tammy. Bless you. Love this. Simple belief. So, what is your belief? What is your faith? What are you having faith about with regards to the quarantine and the coronavirus? Let me say that right now. Are you believing the will of the wisps and the various media? And one thing, it was going to be a minimum of a quarter of a million Americans who were going to die. Now, it's a minimum of 60,000. And it could change again. It could change again. So where is your faith with all of this going back and forth? What is it you believe in? What is it you have decided is true? Have you affirmed in your mind and your heart that when you go back, things are going to be difficult, challenging, stressful, etc.? Or do you see yourself moving back in and things unfolding and perhaps things even being better in your life as a result of this? And in what ways? Begin now to have faith. One of my favorite quotes is uh, it's from the uh, Heinz Head Inn just outside of London. This is carved in the doorframe and I love this. You ready for this? Fear knocked at the door. Faith answered. No one was there. Now, if you don't get that, spend some time with it. Let me say it again. Fear knocked at the door. Faith answered. No one was there. Replace your fear and your worry with faith. You have to do that actively. You don't simply just say, fear and worry go away. You have to replace it with something. Your fear and your worry are based on a thought that you've had, a projection you've had. Your prefrontal cortex has put together an image in your head and in your mind, and you're choosing to pick that up and play with it. You've got to replace it with a different image. You are in the image making business. That's what you're supposed to do. Sorry, the phone uh, changed your name. It does offer peace, says Cynthia. Bonnie Tev says, hi, Ki uh, kid, Clark. Patty Gay Young says, faith that I will love how it unfolds. I love that. I also want you to be specific. I think that's great. I think having a non-attachment is good. I also think that you're going to fill in your brain and in your mind 
uh, what you'll be able to do, what you won't, how things you already are starting to build that because it's a way of keeping you from worrying or maybe possibly trying to give you that worry vaccination we talked about. So begin to see very specifically how things are going to work out for you and your family. Uh, Linda says, great message for this exact moment. Thank you, Linda. Cynthia says, life is always better after an exploration of an extreme event. I agree with that. Yes, Cynthia, those are great words. You're right. Lynn Ballone says, we are connected to everyone and everything. We just need to get beyond our ego, that ass hat in our head. <laughs> everything will work out fine. Okay, ass hat. I have not heard that one today. Uh, this unpredictability has been around for many forever. You know, Patty, I agree with that. Uh, we're trying to exercise some control and some certainty right now when we were trying to do that before the coronavirus came around. So every time we think that, you know, the old saying of uh, humans make plans, God laughs. So I'm not saying that your life is exactly going to turn around, uh, turn out the way it is. It is important, though, that you have faith and not worry. Fear knocked at the door. Faith answered. No one was there. All right. Listen, everybody, thank you so much for joining me and Teddy today. Remember to share today's message. Be nice. Invite your friends. And don't get caught up in the, oh, ain't it awful. Oh, honey, I hate it for you. That was my mother's voice. Ooh, let it go. Focus on something good. All right. Listen, everybody, my God-given strengths will rise, says Patty Gay Young. I agree. Share today. I look forward to giving away another Tumblr. Uh, we got a count of them. We're going to be doing this for another week or two. So please share today's message and join me Monday. Monday, I'm going to be talking about, I've already written out my synopsis, and if I can find it fast, I will tell you what it is. Yes, Monday, we're going to jumpstart what I call the 18% solution. We're going to jumpstart the 18% solution starting on Monday. I'm looking forward to it. Monday morning, have a great Sunday. Bless you all. Be safe. Uh, best message for this moment, Mark says, replace fear with faith and fly. I like that. Mark, the king of alliteration. All right. Allie Grossbeck says shared. Allie, great. You could win a Tumblr today. Let's find out. Everybody share. Let me know that you shared. Bless you all. Thank you for spending this morning with more, no more complaining people their lives are changing we're flying high creating a complaint free world no more